You got your show. Did I finish? <laughs> there it is. We got your presentation. You're standing okay. so, by your um, bird so this is, um, obviously, I photographed the birds. <laughs> and I, I just thought it was kind of funny. I actually That's did this last night. So this presentation is uh, called Mary's Backyard Bird Adventures. So I will just narrate as we go along. So that's my, my backyard. It's very small, but it gives allows me to be very close to the birds. So the, what you will need to get started for an outdoor bird studio. Uh, you don't need much. You need a bird feeder and a bird bath. And I recommend the Squirrel Bustard Standard bird feeder and one or two bird baths. And basically that's all I have plus a hummingbird feeder, which I haven't seen any hummingbirds yet. Uh, you will need bird food. Most of the bird food I buy at the grocery store at Publix, wild bird seed, songbird seed, black oil, sunflower seeds, the cardinals love that. And I've heard mealworms are also um, a great food for birds. I haven't tried that yet. They also love peanut butter. Take yeah. a pine cone, rub bird, it in peanut uh, butter. A bird identifier, I recommend the Bur Merlin Bird ID app. So um, I downloaded it. It's on my phone. When I photograph a bird, I take a picture of the bird on my LCD, then I send it to the app. And just like that, it tells me what kind of bird I have. You will need to have a DSLR or mirrorless camera. And I'm going to say a cropped sensor is preferable um, only because you'll get a longer focal length. Uh, you'll need a telephoto lens of at least 300 millimeters. The best lenses are the Sigma or Tamron 150 to 600 millimeters. It's a big beast. You will need to use the tripod, but they're great lenses. And I think, Julie, you do have one, don't you? I do. Yes. I recommended it. I love it. So I use the Canon 80D, it's a crop sensor camera, and I use the Tamron 18 to 400 millimeter lens, almost always at 400 millimeters. So the crop sensor gives me actually up to 640 millimeters focal length. You're going to need light. Guess what? You're going to need light. So before you design your studio, you want to make sure that the light is on your back or in the subject's eyes, just like you would light a portrait. You want that light in the eyes. A backlit subject is, can be very stunning, and that's called rim light. It is definitely more challenging. It can result in underexposure unless you're very skilled with using manual exposure. Now I'm gonna share with you my camera settings. Now these are not set in stone. Um, I shoot at an aperture of 5.6 or 6.3, which is my widest aperture on my Tamron 400 millimeter lens. I use a very fast shutter speed of at least 1 500th of a second. My ISO is gonna be anywhere from 400 to 5,000, and my lens focal length is usually at 400 millimeters. Tripod. I don't use one because I don't want to be restricted, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't use one, especially if you have that larger lens, you should consider using a tripod. Your background is going to be very important in the design of your outdoor studio. So things that will be, would make a nice background would be fencing, trees, flowers, your ground cover, because birds like to pick on these seeds um, that are on the ground. So if you have rocks, that's great. This is a blurry photograph that I intentionally blurred that I have a very large picture of that I put behind one of my feeders. So it looks like I've used a shallow depth of field. So that's another uh, type of background you can use. So important elements of the composition. Your diagonals are gonna be very important, just like they are in any piece of art your greenery and flowers, and also your complementary colors. Think about the color wheel you learned about in kindergarten. Other requirements is you wanna be quiet. <laughs> the birds don't like a lot of noise, be quiet. And you're gonna need patience. So go out in the morning with your coffee, go out at night with your wine, sit down and, and relax and just wait for those birds to come. Now I'm gonna share with you my post-processing. So most of you, I think, do use Photoshop. For those who don't, this might be a little technical. I do shoot in RAW, I process in ACR, and I choose the auto setting, and then I manually boost texture and clarity. I like a little texture. 
And then after that, uh, bring it into Photoshop or I make a duplicate copy. That way I always have my original. And then I crop, I crop creatively. I use the rule of thirds or I crop square if I'm going to place it on Instagram. I'm going to crop however I want because I can do whatever I want because I'm a creative person. And the next thing I do is I use Topaz, N-R-A-I, which stands for Noise Reduction Artificial Intelligence. And this is the best noise reduction plugin I've ever used. Next, I will sharpen using Topaz Sharpen, but I will only sharpen if needed because an over-sharpened image is not a good image. Right, Sandy? And then in Photoshop, I'll do such things as I dodge, I burn, I'll saturate using the sponge tool, just saturate maybe the bill or certain parts of the bird. And then I boost contrast. That's a personal preference of mine is that I like to have a little bit more contrast. So here I'm gonna to start to show you some of the images that I've, I have taken in the last five weeks. So this is the house finch. And I like this composition because it uses the rule of thirds and there's two subjects in this picture. And this is the Northern Mockingbird. And I, I actually, I love this image. I love the geometrics in it from the fence. I love the blurry background. Um, it blends well with the bird. And I like the fact that the bird has the glint in his eye. Uh, this is another house finch. And this was taken in the early spring before there were a lot of leaves on the trees. But I love the diagonals working with this and um, the greenery and blurriness to the background. This was one of the first pictures that I took um, when I got my bird feeder. I don't really recommend showing this much of the bird feeder, but I did want to show you guys what it looked like. And this is also the house finch. And this is kind of a fun picture. <laughs> the cardinal doesn't look very happy, but uh, you know, I thought it was kind of cute. I like the colors. And here's another picture of the cardinals. Cardinals are out, out everywhere. And this was also taken in the early spring, so there aren't a lot of leaves, but I like the diagonals and I like the textures to this image. The female cardinal, for me, was a lot harder to capture because there were less of them and she just didn't seem to sit still, but I was finally able to capture her and I love this image also. Now, the robin is a very common bird. Um, I mean, when I grew up in Racine, Wisconsin, there were robins everywhere. But I, I, what I like about this image is the simplicity. And I like the background. I always like to add captions to my images. So this one is, of course, the early bird catches the worm. <laughs> uh -huh. And here is um, the goldfinch. And I, I like the geometrics in here, the triangles. What I really don't like is that branch coming down. Um, I was not that successful in removing it, so I just kept it in there. And here is another robin. This was taken way far away. I cropped like one little tiny part of the image in order for the, it to, the image to appear this way. Now this is a song sparrow. <laughs> I've got several pictures of the song sparrow and I just love the way he turns his head and just looks right at me. And I like this image because I like the, how the rock kind of blends in with his tones. And here is another goldfinch and this is in my uh, bird bath. And you can use the bird bath as a way to kind of build a frame around the bird. Here is another um, goldfinch. Very common bird here in my backyard. I see it everywhere. Again, you've got uh, a lot of diagonals there. Now this is the morning dove. Now morning is spelled M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. I thought it was spelled like the morning. So I just found that out. But yeah, I, like I, this, I like this image against the pink hydrangeas. Now here is another cardinal. Um, I like cropping like this. I like cropping where there's a lot of negative space. Um, I might have been able to bring it up a little bit more on the bottom, but I didn't. And here is another cardinal that I took way far away. Um, I think it's pretty sharp, but what I like about this image in particular is the background. Now, you can have a lot of fun photographing birds in the bird bath. <laughs> so this cow bird is not, doesn't look very happy because the rabbit's not sharing his bath with him. And my... Um, Tagline to this was, um, 
a very relaxing bath after a long flight. <laughs> of course, you have to use the fast shutter speed to get that kind of picture. And this is another, I think, think just yeah. a fun picture. It yeah. looks like they're, they're having an altercation or something. The cowbird doesn't look very happy. The cowbird is a very <laughs> mean bird, by the way. It steals eggs. Here is the morning dove, and I like this, again, because of the geometrics in the fencing and because it's framed by the branches. So here, the morning dove, I've got a lot of morning doves here, and I also like this one because of the contrast with the brown fence and the foreground of the bird bath. And this little robin just posed for me beautifully. This is actually my neighbor's bird bath. So thank you, Kathy, because I take a lot of birds at your, in your yard. And this is the uh, cowbird. And uh, this probably has a little bit too much negative mm -hmm. space in it, but I wanted the bird bath in there and I wanted the branch in the upper right. So. And here is one that I really did a lot of work on. It was taken late at night. And um, I added a vignette around it. And I did what I call spectral painting through Topaz Impression to give more of a painterly background. And this one I just recently took like a couple days ago. I posted this one on Instagram. I actually have this one on Facebook too. So I like this because of its simplicity. You know, it's just, it's simple. Now, this was the yard where I, where I lived on Handsome Cab Way, where um, I was renting the 600 millimeter lens, and guess who shows up in my backyard? A hawk. Golden, golden <laughs> hawk. Yeah. So I was very, very pleased. Now, hummingbirds, I'm not that good at photographing hummingbirds. This is one of the best ones that I've taken, but I'm, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna pursue pursue it this uh, spring and summer by adding flash units so that that will freeze the motion of the wings. And I had to throw in this squirrel, you guys. <laughs> yeah, He's, he was just there and he just was posing for me. Now I want to talk about a couple other spots in Georgia where uh, give you a lot of great opportunities for bird photography. One is the Chattahoochee Nature Center. And they have a whole bunch of owls. And if you're lucky to be there during mealtime, you'll you'll find you'll be able to photograph uh, the birds. Is this a hawk? Can somebody tell me, is this a hawk? Yes. Okay. I think so. Yeah. And this That's is probably pretty. one of my favorite images of wow. all times. This is the eagle oh. with the drool. <laughs> Was not the perfect time of the day, so the lighting's not great. I did a lot of Photoshop on this guy. And here's another photograph of the eagle. There is a bald eagle there. It's surrounded by fencing, so you have to use a very wide aperture and a long lens, and it kind of sometimes will blur out the fencing, but you can see a little bit of it there in the background. You have to work with what you have. Another great spot in the Atlanta area is Brookhaven, Lennox Park in Brookhaven. And they actually have a resident blue heron there that I- um, Hey, looks like my backyard. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and this guy was very cooperative and posed for me. And I was actually there to do a high school senior portrait. And I'm like, excuse me, I gotta photograph this bird. But um, <laughs> this is uh, called the shoot through method where you've got um, greenery, or foliage in front of and behind the subject that's out of focus. And this was when the bird went in flight. And I think I got him, I think I got him okay in focus. I think he could have been a little bit sharper, but it's the best I could do on short notice. And, I'm, and I'm gonna end with this image because I like to meld art with photography. And I took advantage of an overcast sky when I was in Apalachicola and I overexposed this picture. And then I converted it to black and white. And that's it. Yay. Neat.